does design in paintball matter? Design in paintball is incredibly important. It's a very gear dependent sport. I mean, everything from the way your pods come out of your harness, kind of peek your way up to the most important thing. And the most important thing other than the paint is the gun. It was never really anything that was planned. It just happened. Jacko, Leds, and Jack Wood were all legends playing professionally in England. The very, very beginning of the whole thing was to get paintball products for us to play with. How did it grow from you leaving WDP to come, you know? You probably can't put that on camera. <laughs> Planet Eclipse had just always, there was really nice guys from England, and they just made tip top stuff. It's not about making a product and running away with the cash, is it? It's like trying to, trying to get everything into paintball and build it and make new stuff and a new competition. We always want to produce and make the best for the player. And if it doesn't work, we, we, we won't bring it to market. And with that, being able to sponsor teams that we'd, we'd like. You know, I was one of, their, one of the first, you know, Eclipse players, right? And so I kind of felt like, you know, people knew me as well as they knew Eclipse. We were one for a lot of years and... One, two, three, two, three. We were talking to them about sponsorship, and they're like, well, we got something big coming, but we won't tell you what it is. And I'm like, come on, man. First time we brought our gun, it was a huge leap. You know, we didn't know if it was gonna be a successful thing for us or it'd be the end of the company. And at the time, even though that autococker was paying my bills, I was really a little jealous of the dudes that got to shoot the ego, if I'm gonna be completely frank with you. It's one of our little mantras, if you like. The customer should be playing paintball with their gun, not fixing it. Their markers have been with us since they introduced the uh, Eagle. And I was one of the first guys to shoot an 07 Eagle, and, and we've been with them ever since. They made a gun that competed with their own gun, and they made something even more popular. One more time, actually say Geo. And not Ego again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said with any Eclipse guns, the best things about them are they work no matter what. That's when I went from thinking of them as another manufacturer to being, oh gosh, these guys have something and they're not done. They're going to keep making it better and better and better. And at the point I, I turned around to Julian Leds and went, actually, this is again a different gun now. They are the cornerstone of an industry. They have broken out of that legendary player status and now are legends on the manufacturing side. Jack Wood is one of the most innovative designers that we have in paintball. If somebody came up to me with a, an argument that was contrary to that, I would question your motive and I would question your knowledge of the game. I never thought that I'd be able to have a, a full-time career. I thought, you know, at best I get a few years out of it and then have to find a real job. I'm Jack Wood, I'm the lead designer, and I've been with Planet Clip since day one. So you're the first employee, Jack, eh? Yep. I was actually there before the company started, so. Well, my uncle owned the company originally. He was one of the first people in the UK to bring paintball into the country. He had a, a paintball site and then opened a store, and from the age of probably 10, we were running around the fields at his house, shooting these horrible big brass things that took 15 minutes to load one ball into them. It just went from there really, and I got addicted to it. I, I used to cycle about 15 miles every weekend to go and help ref for him, uh, and then obviously grew up doing that. And then later on, once I could drive, went and started working in this store. And The way it actually worked out was that Leds and Jules were, were playing on the band's eyes, the, the team we, we all played for. So I was working for my uncle, my uncle owned the store, my auntie got very ill, uh, she got cancer uh, and died and my, my uncle wanted to get out of the business. Leds and Julia bought the company off my uncle, so I came with the fixtures and fittings if you like. Leds didn't like his job. I was working for a, a big corporation where I was a little miniature person and no one gave a toss about at all. I hated that. And they decided they wanted to buy the company off my uncle, so um, they did. It was a great shop with a great vibe, and I miss that every day, to be honest, in some ways. Because we didn't really work, we just hung out in a shop from 10.30, if we managed to get there on time, to whenever we shut. 
and then uh, we'd go out drinking or we'd just get food in or whatever and people would come down and hang out. Join the Eclipse in um, 1998. I was up in Manchester one day, we were playing a tournament and I was in the uh, Planet store and chatting away with Jules and he said, what are you doing now? And I said, oh, doing X, Y, Z. And he said, why don't you come and do X, Y, Z with us? And I went, okay, sounds like fun. The reason I left a proper job was to, to do something that meant something to me. There was no vision. I mean, you know, no. Uh, nothing at all. Uh, maybe other people did, uh, we didn't. Um, it wasn't to customise it or to, um, uh, you know, to make this great thing for ourselves. It's because we play paintball and we couldn't get anything. So um, when we opened the store, we wanted to, um, we went, me and Jules, or Jules really, um, had contacts where we could get the, the latest and the greatest stuff. We were like little kids, you know, wow, this, wow, the new products just arrived, you know, woo! That was what it was all about to start with. And then as we got into the industry, we realized that a lot of the product that people were creating was crap. So the first things that we started modifying really were parts for the old Sterling pump guns. Initially, it was just for us, it was just for the team. And then obviously we were very successful with the Banzai's and we won all kinds of stuff in the UK. Uh, and people were like buying the guns that we were shooting and then wanted the modifications that we had because we were winning. Jack Wood was, you know, he's a great engineer. He's, he's a very intelligent guy. And we used his knowledge to make things better. So I did uh, mechanical engineering at Manchester University and I was there for four years. The whole time was at, in, in Manchester doing my degree. I was also working in, in uh, Paintball Planet, as it was called at the time. I'd take parts into the machine shop at the university and get a guy that I knew and, and befriended in the university to machine parts for me. Um, and we'd stick those in our guns and we'd go and play and they worked really well. My final year project was actually uh, making a paintball gun. If there's anybody out there that knows where my paintball gun is that I made, we'd love to have it back, please. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? What happened to it? Um, we sold it. Obviously, most of the parts were, were manufactured using Planet Eclipse money. After I finished that, it just went on the wall and we sold it, and we'd love to get it back. From there, you know, we, we moved on from the pump guns, we went into semi-autos, and the, the first semi-autos that were on the market were dreadful. A few years ago, if you got one in ten guns that came out of the box that worked, you're probably doing well. So they all needed things modifying on. And the more we got to know the guns, the, the more we, we knew that what was out there wasn't perfect and that we could make them better. Um, so we did, it was, it was very organic. The first big products that like launched us onto the world market were really the cockers that we started doing. We started making like the, the really nice Eclipse cockers with slide triggers, then we did the hinge triggers, and you know the hinge trigger was a, like a really big thing for us. I remember when the swing frames started coming out. Wargame products had one that was possibly one of the ugliest things that's, that's ever been made. Then Shock Tech came out with theirs and they raised the bar on ugly. It's probably the only thing Shock Tech's ever made that hideous. And then I saw the Eclipse one and the Eclipse one was beautiful. They were the only guys to make a swing frame for an autococker that did the job and actually made the gun look better. And that's when we, we started having a product that we could like ship to the rest of the world. And it wasn't just some guys around Manchester just bolting bits onto the guns. It, it was a complete product that you could ship to a different country and somebody could buy it and open it and go, wow, this is a really cool piece of kit. The autococker is, in every sense of the word, a legendary paintball gun. It was just the first badass machine that you put in your hands and if you got one that worked. Planet Eclipse made some awesome autocockers back in the day, but once the electronic guns came in, because the rate of fire was so high back in the day, you know, at first we're talking in the 20s, in 2003, and then they finally capped it at 15. So the autococker just can't keep up, like it just mechanically cannot keep up. I remember in the end of 2002, when I realized it was Planet Eclipse that was making the electronic frame for the autococker, the E-Blade. 
you know, people wanted speed and they were, electronics was the new cool thing. So at the time uh, we developed the E-Blade, the electronic paintball gun market was starting to boom. The Autococker was a fantastic gun, but it, as other guns, you know, like your Angels and, and Shockers of the time, were getting faster and faster and faster, the Cocker just couldn't compete. We thought there was a bit of a niche because there was still a huge Autococker following and there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of autococks out there. So rather than having to spend a thousand dollars on a paintball gun, you spend a few hundred dollars and put an e-blade onto, onto your cocker that's worth like eighty dollars in the sat in your bag and you suddenly got an electronic gun. So to take an e-blade, put that on this this thing that you just, you know, there's just a feel to an autococker, you know I mean? It's, again, it's like a classic car. It really has that, that feel to it. You know, it's not a Lamborghini, it's not a Ferrari, but at least you know, an E-Blade was like taking a, a giant you know, supercharged engine and putting it in a classic car so you could have a drag race with a Ferrari. And that was kind of the magic of the E-Blade. Before, I, they'd made cool things. They made whole autocockers, but lots of people made autocockers. They made beautiful guns, but lots of people made beautiful guns. That was the first piece of true technology that I remember everybody that had an autococker couldn't wait to do a terrible job with a hand drill and drill it for eyes, slap that frame on, and all of a sudden they owned a machine gun. And that was our first step into the electronics. A big part of making that step was to get Steve Monk's flash to get him on board, just getting him to leave his really, really good engineering job, getting him to come and join us. That was the, like, the final piece in the puzzle so that we had everybody we needed in-house so we could do our own projects. It started off as a miniature thing, and then, I don't know, maybe 500,000 e-blades later, <laughs> you know, we thought maybe we want to make our own paintball gun now. The ego might have come a couple of years earlier if the e-blade hadn't been so successful. There was no real first time we thought, right, we have to make a paintball gun. We were always looking at making a gun. It was always in the background of, of what we wanted to do. Went through a lot of processes of remanufacturing, re-engineering other people's paintball guns. And for years and years we were saying, we should just do this ourselves. We were really excited to be talking to Eclipse just because they had such a good reputation for such good quality products. But it was like I, like, I knew they were coming out with a gun. They knew they were coming out with a gun. And I was just like, tell me you're coming out with a gun. Tell me it's gonna be a good gun. Give me an idea what the concept is gonna be like so that I can at least tell my players it's taken care of. We're not shooting e cockers, we're gonna be shooting a good gun. And they just wouldn't do it. They're just like, you gotta wait, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. We've always focused specifically on making products that work and they're reliable and the customer can just pull them out of a bag and go and shoot them. So we knew that whatever we built, it had to be really robust, really reliable. Now, we were the first Ego team, and a lot of people asked us in the beginning, you know, why are you risking it on a new gun? Before we started shooting the Egos, Eclipse had a, a reputation of having super high quality products. Um, the, the guys who run the company, Julian, Jacko, and Leds, all had a super um, reputation of just being really good guys, being really straight up. Uh, a lot of people you deal with in the industry, when you're doing a deal with them, you, you know it's just gonna fall. You know at some point they're gonna screw you. And I, I never had any question with any of those guys that they were gonna be there for us, they were gonna do what they said they were gonna do, and that means a lot. First big moment for me was we came out to San Diego, came out to Commander's Cup, and we came out with Excessive, and we went to practice at the back of the old JT building, and they had a field set up back there. The team was pretty stoked that we were going to be getting the new Planet Eclipse gun, which had a pretty bold name. You know what I mean? To name your gun Ego, I think is a kind of a bold, it's a bold statement. So, excessive creative. We didn't, we didn't have a gun sponsor. We shot whatever. So I'm shooting this brick of a Gen E Matrix. You young bucks would have no clue what that is. You know, it weighs about you know 16 to 18 pounds. We took the excessive guys and we, we stuck them on the field, and they'd never even seen these guns before, and they were going to play the next day in the Commander's Cup with them. And when he go, go and shoot those. I get a hand of this gun, shooting as fast as we can possibly shoot, super light. How does this gun so light, shoot so fast, it was just... And they just came off after the first game and just went, holy f what are these things? It was a different animal than anything I'd ever shot in my life. You know, all my years of playing autocockers and angels, I knew that paintball was gonna change. That was like the, okay, this is gonna work. We know we've got a good product here. And then we, we displayed it and showed it at Commander's Cup that year. Uh, and it just blew up from there. It was amazing. 
At the end of 2005, I remember thinking, oh, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna release a similar version of the gun every year. Then 2007 came and the gun was radically different. The Ego 7, it was so nice, so smooth. It was smaller, it was lighter, it was sleeker, it was cooler. It was just different, you know, you could snap shoot faster, you, you, you could shoot more paint, you could shoot your paint faster, you know, running was better. And that's when I went from thinking of them as another manufacturer that was making cool and workable guns to being, oh gosh, these guys have something and they're not done. They're going to keep making it better and better and better. We obviously had the Ego and it was really successful, but there was a definite move from a lot of the player base to move towards a, a spool valve face mechanism. And we didn't have one of those in our range at the time. And we thought, you know, to keep up with the markets, we, we need to, you know, be able to provide something like that. Hello, I'm Jack Wood. I work for Planet Eclipse and we're here at the 2008 World Cup for the US debut of our brand new product, the Eclipse Geo. Anytime you're asked to create something new or, or you challenge yourself to uh, build something new that's outside of what you currently make, it's exciting, it's a challenge, um, and it's really what engineers like to do. It was fun to see after years of making the Ego, which was at the time probably the most successful high-end paintball gun on the planet. They saw the market for spool valve guns and they were not content with what they had. Don't necessarily want to try and regurgitate the same thing over and over. It's nice to have a new challenge and, uh, and, and find a different, uh, different way of approaching something. So yeah, it was always good fun to do that. They made a gun that competed with their own gun and they made something even more popular. They released the Geo. We had worries at the time whether it was going to kill the sales of the ego or whether it was kill the ego, ego off altogether. So we thought we'll just go straight in there and keep them very similar specification, market them at exactly the same price point, same features, same everything, and basically let them fight, fight it out and the winner would succeed. As it turns out, both of them went on uh, and were both very successful because it was clearly players who preferred one platform over another and vice versa. A lot of the inspiration that I get for new features or changes to product has to come from the players because they're the ones using the product. Me sat in my office, I'm not using a paintball gun. Obviously I still play paintball uh, and I know what I like, but that's not necessarily applicable to the modern game or to a customer who plays paintball in Alaska. Pretty much all the guys who work in Planet Eclipse in, the, in Manchester still play paintball. Um, some of them to a, a very high level, some of them to a not so high level. So it's quite nice to be able to go to them and say, if I did this, would that help you at all? and then say, no, don't be stupid. Or, yeah, that'd be amazing. I've always dreamt of that. They listen, Eclipse listens, Jack Woods really listens to, to what we have to say, our input, our feedback, and he takes everything from all the teams, from our players, and then builds a gun around that to, to, to work for the player, and that's what Eclipse does really well. You've got pro players playing on the biggest stage in the world, and they want something a bit different, and we always get, they, they'll always come over and say, do you think you could just make this so it's like I can move it back a little bit further or can you make my trigger do this or? For me, I, I think of, of guns it, it, like, a, like a shoe. When you put on a shoe, you want it to feel good, you want it to look good, and you want it to be comfortable. That's what I really like about the LVR, that, that, that platform, is the skinny body, the way it feels in the front grip, the back grip, everything through and through with that gun in my hands since, since the 3.5 has been my favorite gun. I've been shooting Eclipse guns ever since I turned pro, actually. Since 2005, I've been shooting Eclipse guns. But I really got hooked when, uh, when the LV-1 platform came out. 
So the LV1 was like a, a giant leap for us in terms of our poppet valve based uh, platform. When uh, I probably talked about it at the time that when we uh, came up with the idea for the lever valve in the LV, uh, that it was so good that we couldn't feel that it could just go into the same aesthetic package as the previous egos. We needed to change lots of things about the, the, the gun itself so that people realised it was a completely different product uh, and it wasn't just another ego. I think uh, the art and the design and the functionality uh, of, of the marker itself play pretty much hand in hand and just I, I think the pinnacle of that is the, uh, the LV marker itself. I think the single biggest thing that I'm, I'm proud of would be the LV1 because it was such a huge step change for all poppet based paintball guns. To add that element in between the rammer and the valve um, that makes the LV1 so distinctive to shoot and makes it sound so good and, and feel so good. Um, that's probably the, the one biggest thing. It was just like uh, that eureka moment and, and actually making it work. Just encompasses everything that I believe Eclipse is has been trying to provide the paintball community for a long time and that's uh, ease of use and just a, a beautiful marker in general. Very similar to how we rebranded the Ego line with the LV, the CS was almost a rebranding of the Geo. The CS1 had so many changes on it, it almost didn't warrant the Geo name. It was so different and there were so many uh, differences to how it all went together and the features that were on it that uh, we thought, right, this is a good time to, instead of having a Geo 4, we'll go to uh, something different and that became the CS1. So the CS2 actually started off several years ago as a big revision of the CS1.5. During the development of the CS2, we introduced the Gamma Core and it became clear through testing it ourselves internally that that platform has a lot of advantages that our pro players would appreciate, customers that want our best performing and highest end product would appreciate. I shot the gun instantly. I called Jacko and said, this should not be called the CS2 because this is not the CS. The CS2 to me, it feels different, it shoots different, it sounds different. It is the next level one gun. The Gamma Core was something completely different. It had its roots in a very different place and it was a completely from ground up design. It didn't take any parts from anywhere else. Every single component in it is completely different to an Ivy Core. And at the point I, I turned around to Julian Leds and went, actually, this is again a different gun now. And it's like, a bit late to change the name at this point. You know, I told Jack this today, that shooting the CS2 is for me like going back to that original ego. Like there is a game changer here. I think the, the reason we're still around now, 25 years later, I think the thing is that we're all still really grounded, even though, yes, we have bosses, we have leads and jewels, they're there every day. They're still really passionate about the business. And the main thing is that they're passionate about making sure the customers are happy. And you get a guy like Jack who spent his now his career, you know, crafting these incredibly high-level products that just make you have a funner time out there. I mean, funner is not a word, but I'm going to use it for Jack. As you get bigger and bigger, it's too easy to get detached from your customer base. Um, and as a company, we've just never done that. Oh man, what makes Jack what a, a great designer? Uh, it's his passion. He's the guy that designs the gun and then is in your pits, making it sure that it's shooting the way that he designed it. He, he actually goes to the players and wants feedback. Not just tell me my gun is great. If it wasn't for Jack, I've had a lot of good paintball moments because Jack Wood exists. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. The way I see it is, you know, I don't get paid by Leads and Jewels, my boss. I get paid by the customer by them buying the product. So if they're not happy and they're not buying it, then I'm out of a job. He, he's not just creating the next thing, he wants to create the next best thing, and it shows in his work.